Maayong gabi sa tanan. Maayong gabi, Brother Gulo. Kumusta ka na? <laughs> Maayong gabi, Kuya Gilbert and all. Again, I just want to repeat my name. My name is Jelo Balsita. I am now here in Quezon City. I'm studying online in Loyola School of Theology. We are studying philosophy most of the time. So we are like uh, those uh, not understandable uh, people. <laughs> Our brain is uh, getting bigger. <laughs> And I'm happy to have this break of sharing the word of God. This is like a break for me also. <laughs> And as I have mentioned, I met the community when I was 17 years old through my professor in humanities, Ma'am Regina Peña. I am now 27 years old. Wow, ang bilis ng panahon. It's been like 10 years that I've been journeying in this community. I worked as an IT systems analyst for four years. And then later on, the Lord has called me to discern if my vocation is to be a consecrated missionary. After a year and another two years in Chile, South America, I have understood that the Lord is calling me to take this step of uh, being a consecrated missionary to give my life to all. Knowing that the best way I can live this life to the full is to give it to God and to give it to all. To give it to God who saves me, who loves me. And this is what I want to talk with you today. Our Lord who saves us, our Savior. And this is Advent. A joyful Advent To all, yesterday we began this season we call Advent. This is a time of joyful waiting for the coming of the Lord. This is the title I will put in this Advent formation. A time of waiting. A time of joyful waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This year, we remember at December 25, 2021. We don't really know the birthday, exact birthday of Jesus. But we traditionally celebrate it every December 25. And before that day, one month, for one whole month, for four Sundays, we have this what we call Advent period to prepare ourselves to celebrate that very, very, very big event that changed the course of history and continues to change everything up to today. And this is Advent season. Talking about Christmas. Pasko na naman. Ayan. Ay kita na siguro natin sa kalsada, iba't ibang Christmas rites and all of this. When we talk about Pasko, Christmas, when you hear this word, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? And just be honest. Put it in the chat. You can say like, ah, Parol or Jose Marie Chan. <laughs> If you like socks, uh, maybe I'm thinking of foods or simbang gabi and all of this, kainan, gathering, giving gifts. What's the first thing that comes into your mind when you hear the word Christmas? Happiness. Wow. That's it. Wow. So deep. Happiness. Ano pa? I gave this formation to... A group of young people also last Saturday, and they said, "Ah, gift, of course, gift giving, and then gathering, kainan, and then one of them said, of course, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's it, yeah, Jesus Christ. Before we forget him, giving and receiving. Yes, that's true, giving and receiving. Also, we remember the blessings, the blessings, the Lord." Lahat ng nareceive natin throughout the year. Parang December 25 pa lang, inaalala na natin sila. And not only throughout the year, but our whole lives, our life itself. This is a blessing. It's a blessing na buhay pa tayo ngayon. Despite of all the many challenges we are experiencing. Tama ba? Christmas. Napakagandang panahon. Yan yung pinaka-inaabang-abangan natin sa Pilipinas. September pa lang. 
ready na tayo dyan. Bear months. Handang-handa na para sa Christmas. And ito yung ating uh, paghahandaan. Not only externally. Kita natin, marami ng iba't ibang designs to celebrate Christmas. You see Santa Claus everywhere. You see on the sales sa Lazada, sa Shopee, Christmas sale and all of this. A lot of exterior preparations. Today, I invite every one of us to open our hearts to prepare ourselves internally as we, pre- as we welcome the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi ni Pope Francis, ito, Advent season is a favorable time to open our hearts to ask ourselves concrete questions about how and for whom we expend our lives. Remember these two words. How? How do you expend your lives? Paano ka ba nabubuhay ngayon? For whom? Kanino ka ba nabubuhay? Para kanino ka ba bumabangon? Sino yung una mong naisip? For whom do you expend your lives? And I think more than the question of how I want to focus on the for whom, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to deepen what does it mean Jesus as the Savior of mankind. Jesus as my personal Savior. Can you say that? Jesus is my personal Savior. Do you know what does, what does it mean whenever we profess those words? And this is, let us uh, deepen on this moment, these uh, truths. Advent season is a time to joyfully wait and prepare for two things. Nabanggit ko na kanina, yes, the first coming, Christmas Day, 2,000 years ago, the first coming of Jesus in Bethlehem. And then second, we also prepare for the second coming or the final day, the ends of time. These are two very, very big topic. Christmas Day is so great that it cut the history of mankind. That's why we have 2021. We call that AD, Anum Dominum, the year of the Lord. That's the birth of Jesus Christ. From then on, we counted 2021 years. And then before that, we call it BC, before Christ. So that was how great that event was, that it cuts the history. What happened there? Second is the final day, the second coming. Again, it will cut the history of mankind, but this time, definitively. Final na. That's it. That's the end of everything. Ooh, do you feel afraid about that? Let's see. Let's depend on that. First, let us focus on the first coming. Ayan. We have here the picture of the first coming. I have one question. Again. What is something that you have been waiting for? Ano yung bagay na pinakahinahantay-hantay mo? Are you waiting to graduate? college or high school? Are you waiting for a job? Are you waiting for the special one in your life? Are you waiting for the dinner? <laughs> Nagugutom na ako. Kain na. <laughs> Peace of mind. Yeah. Tru- truly been waiting for that. Contentment. Yes, that's true. Happiness. Again, fulfillment. That's the things we have been waiting for. I'm being surprised, huh? Because uh, these young people, Kuya Gilbert, are so deep. <laughs> Normally, I am just thinking of physical things. Ah, I've been waiting for me to graduate na. So I can go uh, as a missionary priest to go to different places. <laughs> oh, but these uh, young people, really, they are waiting for more than the external things. Waiting for the time to be able to breathe in life. Wow. <sighs> Hinga-hinga muna. Okay. 
ya sarap ya sarap mabuhay sarap uminga sarap nga ulit ya oke okay. buhay na buhay all these things that we have been waiting for we are waiting for them for a reason because we want our lives to be better that's the reason why we are waiting for them we know that if these things will arrive better things will happen we are all waiting for something yet i also in, want to invite you that there is this something that we have been waiting for that goes beyond us We are waiting for something that we ourselves cannot achieve on our own. We are waiting for something that others cannot give to us. Because we are waiting. If we will go in deep into our hearts, we are waiting for that maximum happiness, maximum contentment, fulfillment, realization, that there will be no more war, that there will be no more hatred. We are all waiting for this thing to come. And we cannot do that on our own alone. We are waiting for what we call the Messiah. We are waiting for the Savior who can give us that love that fills us We are waiting for that person. Not something, but someone. There was an experience of mine when I needed someone else to save me. Have you experienced that? Na kailangan mo ng tulong ng ibang tao kasi hindi mo na kaya. Hindi ko na kaya. I was not good in swimming. <laughs> I was like, 18 years old, when I learned how to swim, I enrolled in our physical education class. So they taught us the basics, how to swim. I was not really good at it. I was good only in doing bubbles. I think I only passed that uh, doing bubbles exam. And then in the final exam, We needed to cross the Olympic size swimming pool. But not the length of it, only the wide, the width. But that was already so long for me and so deep. I was afraid to do that, to swim there. But still, this is final exam. What can I do? So <laughs> instead of diving, I just went down to this, uh, to the pool <laughs> and then pushed myself from the wall. And then I started to swim, 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 swim. And in the middle of it, almost three-fourths of it, I lost my focus. I lost my will. I lost my enthusiasm. I lost my breath. I couldn't breathe anymore. I was drowning. I couldn't help myself. I didn't know how. I was panicking in all of this. Inside my heart, I was shouting, help me, save me. Help me, save me. And thanks be to God, one of my classmates helped me. He saved me. I couldn't save myself. Why am I sharing this to you, that experience? Because in life, it is like that. Outside, we look very good in swimming. We're good in controlling ourselves, our situations, in handling our tasks, our problems, and all of this. Like everything is going well. But inside, in the secret of our hearts, where many people don't know, we are already struggling. We have a lot of problems, sufferings, and burdens. We have our weaknesses, our failures, 
and our shortcomings. There are sins inside us. There is anger, envy, lust, laziness, glutinous, and all of this that is drowning us. We cannot breathe anymore. It's killing us. And we need someone to help us. And the Lord comes into our lives. The Lord saves us. The Lord knows what other people don't know and don't see. He understands us. And He saves us. From our being drowned. This experience is the experience of the Israelites. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, they were waiting for the Messiah, the Savior that could help them to be free from the oppression of the conquering countries, from the Ro Romans during the time of Jesus. Then the Lord came. He saved them. How? By loving them. By welcoming the sinners, the prostitutes, the tax collectors. By loving them. By embracing them. By forgiving them. He saved them. He loved them. And this Savior of ours humbly was born in a manger. He was there. God heard our petitions. God heard our deepest longing, that one that we have been waiting for. So he gave his only son. And it all began with a simple, young, pious woman. Of around like 14 or 15 years old, imagine. And with St. Joseph. This is the story of the first coming. And let me read it to you. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke. He did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son and he named him Jesus. From the Gospel of Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 to 25. The ultimate reason why Jesus was born, came into this world, was incarnated is to save us. To save us from our sins. Today. Today he is saving us. From what drowns us. This is the story of the first coming. He would save us by giving himself. By loving. Because after all, what is sin? Sin is a no to love. Whenever we say no to love, there is this sin that is killing us inside.
But when we say yes to love, when we say yes to follow the will of God, that contrasts the sin. That destroys it. That kills it. That's the grace that the Lord is giving us. He saves us through loving, through giving. 2,000 years ago, he was born in Bethlehem. He saved many people during his lifetime. And today, he continues to save us because the Lord continues to come into our lives. He is be being born into our hearts. Like what St. Bernard Clairvaux said, there are three distinct comings of the Lord. Of which I know. He's coming to men. The first coming. He's coming into men today. And he's coming against men. Second coming. He's coming into men. And women. He's coming into us today. He's being born into our hearts. Christ is being born in your heart today. Jessa. Gilbert. Johnny. Yes, uh, Ken, Ayasin, Maggie. The Lord is being born into our hearts, to my heart too. And this is the time of Advent, the time to remember how much the Lord has loved us, has saved us, and is an invitation to love the way He loves. The Lord is my Savior. Personally, He saved me in many, many ways. He saved me from my self-destructive path when I was younger. I had a lot of craziness in life. <laughs> I was even caught by the police before. Then I even went to different dark places and all of this. <laughs> and the Lord has saved me. The Lord has helped me to renew my life. And he gave me this beautiful life today. And we can continue to allow the Lord to be born in us if we also love and love others. And that love saves. A love that saves. A love that is like the love of Christ. This is the first coming. That's why in Christmas, we give. We give gifts. We gather each other. We give blessings. Because we remember Christ who gave himself. We remember Christ who loves us by giving, by giving and giving. And this is life. Our life increases in the measure we give ourselves away. So let us continue giving and giving. Let me go to my second point, which is the second coming. <laughs> let me begin with the question in this part. Okay, what if you are about to die on December 25, 2021? What will you do? Bilang na ang mga araw mo. May tanan ka na. December 25, you have, we have one month. One month for this day. What will we do? Will we prepare for it? Will we change our lives? We will say, will we say, I love you to our parents, to our friends, to our siblings? Will we say, I'm sorry? Will we say, I forgive you? One of the youth uh, shared with us when I gave this formation, he told me, you know what I've been thinking of the next five years, 10 years, and 20 years of my lives. I've been thinking of being rich. But now you ask this question, what if your, your life is just one month na lang? And then he realized, you know what, I just want to say I'm sorry. I just want to use this one month to the most essential things in life. To love the people around me. How about you? How will you use uh, this one month? Repent. Wow, that's a strong word. Yeah? That's so deep. That's so great. 
one month. What will happen after December 25? We don't know. Whenever we think about the end of times, normally we think of disasters like uh, earthquake, tsunami, asteroids, and all of this. Very scary. Maybe it will happen. Maybe December 25, that's it. The end of the world, period. And if you will ask people, a lot of people think about that kind of uh, end of the world. That kind of image. Maybe it will happen. Maybe not. Maybe the end of times is just a blink of a night. That's it. After we blink, there. We are in front of God. We are in front of God. What will we tell him? What will you tell him? What will he tell us? Are we afraid of this moment? Or are we joyfully waiting for this moment? For me, personally, those two things are good. It's good to be afraid sometimes. Because it gives us the sense of seriousness in life. When we think about this, there is this final judgment in the end of time. But it's also joyfully waiting for it if we know that we are doing our best to be able to face God. And this is our formation to learn how to grow in life, in loving so that we are ready to face God. Have you been in the court <laughs> before? Yeah. Yes, uh, you're ready. That's good. <laughs> Let's keep on being ready. Keep awake. Be vigilant. You will hear that a lot in this, uh, the Bible and the readings these days. Have you been to a court? Sa korte, you may judge, may lawyers, and then mayroong mga cases and all of this. I've been to a court. I had a case before. But it was not a criminal case. Don't worry. I'm not a criminal. My NBI clearance ako. <laughs> it was a civil case. I needed to change my surname. Well, to put my, the surname that was proper then because it was not there. I needed it to apply for passport. So my father and I went to the court again and again and then there was one time when i was mixed up with criminal cases i was there sitting with my father and then like seven to ten men in orange they were changed chained to each other they came in and two police were accompanying them i was a bit shocked and afraid because <laughs> they sat behind me and beside me. So it was my first time to be surrounded by alleged criminals. And then one of them went in front and then one attorney uh, read this narrative, this story of what happened to his case. Uh, in the bottom line, he was found with uh, drugs in his pocket. And then He was asked, are you guilty or not? And then he said, I'm not guilty. There was someone else who put that drugs in my pockets. And then uh, the attorney of him uh, started to defend uh, the person in front of the alleged criminal. Are you guilty or not? When I reflected on this uh, experience of mine, somehow this is the image of the final day of the second coming. There will be this kind of final judgment where we will be asked, are you guilty or not? We will look back into our lives We will see all that happened. It's like watching a movie. We will watch the movie of our own lives. But not only what happened externally, but also internally. What was happening there? What was the struggle? What was the 
difficulties, the challenges, the joys, the desires, and all of this. And we will be asked, are you guilty or not? Are you guilty of not loving your brother, your sister, your parents, your teachers, your friends, the strangers, the poor? Are you guilty or not? And we cannot lie because God knows everything. God knows what is inside our hearts. Perhaps a better question than are you guilty or not is have you loved? Nagmahal ka ba? Nagmahal ka ba? Let me read to you now what I found the most beautiful image of the second coming from the Gospel of Matthew. I invite you to enter into this word of God with that scenery of a court. God is with us and asking us, have you loved? Nagmahal ka ba? When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit upon His glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before Him. And He will separate from them from one another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me. In prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you? Or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. A stranger and you gave me no welcome. Naked and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And this will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. In summary, at the end of life, we are going to be judged on the basis of our love for one another. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. When the last day comes, my friends, the Lord will ask us, how much did you love? How deep did you love? Show me your hands. Do you have scars because of giving? Show me your feet. Is it dirty because of going to these people who need help? Show me your heart. Is it pierced because of giving yourself without any condition, without any interest? 
How much did you love the people that surround you? Your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your teachers, the strangers, the poor. Have you visited them? Have you talked with them? Have you thought about them? How much did you love? Maybe some of us are thinking, I am ready. That's good. I am ready for this time to come. And maybe most of us are not yet ready. I myself, I am guilty. I'm not yet ready. I still need to purify my heart of many things. I still fail to do a lot of things I need or I know I can do, but I haven't done yet. I still want to say I'm sorry and I love you to many people. And this is the time of Advent. The good news is that we have time. Yes, <laughs> we have time. We can prepare ourselves. And Advent is a moment to joyfully prepare ourselves as we wait for that person whom we really long for who will save us, who will give us this eternal life, eternal happiness. And perhaps this time we are thinking of the concrete people already that we want to love, that we want to say, I love you or I'm sorry. That's good. That's great. Now we are ready to ask ourselves, how are we spending our lives? And how can we spend it better in growing, in being loving like Christ, of saving people through his saving love. The church is helping us this moment. We will see that in the church, there is this environment of color violet. <laughs> color violet is a symbol of this Advent rite also that shows prayer, penance, joy, and charity. We will see that. Advent read in the churches. If we will attend online or face to face, there are four candles. Three are color violet, one is color pink. The church, through this, invites us to live this Advent season with prayer, penance, joy, and charity. And I invite you if there is this just one that we can live out truly out of these four, let us live that joy. Maybe this Advent, we can live this Advent with joy. It, masaya. Diba? You joy that comes from the Lord because we are hopeful for His coming. Let us ask ourselves, what are the concrete things I can do while I joyfully wait for the coming of the Lord? What are the concrete things I can do while I joyfully wait for the coming of the Lord? You know what? I have made a personal calendar that can help me to live out this Advent season. I have it here. Printed. And this is the one I want to share with you also. I put here some concrete things we can do to live out moment of prayer penance, charity, and joy. Scattered throughout the month, some concrete invitations, uh, challenge on living this Advent season. Let me give you some example. For example, today, <laughs> November 29, I will work well and with joy today for God. Oh, yeah, I hope I am doing this. <laughs> I am working uh, with joy. And Wednesday, December 1, I will greet the people I will meet with a smile. Or this coming December 9, I will ask for forgiveness to someone I've committed a mistake. Or December 14, I will be cheerful and thoughtful of others. Or December 21, I will share my faith with someone. So these are just uh, concrete things and invitations we can do 
And I invite you to personalize this Advent calendar. I will give you a copy in PDF format. I invite you to, if possible, print it out. And then put your own. These challenges, you can take it. And you can change it. You can edit it. And you can add onto it if you want. So this will be our like takeaway for this Advent formation. Our Advent calendar. And I believe if we try to be faithful in living out this Advent season, as we joyfully wait for the Lord, He will make us more and more ready to receive Him today and for the days to come. Again, we can ask ourselves, what are the concrete things I can do as I joyfully wait for the coming of the Lord? In summary, my friends, Advent time is a moment of joyfully waiting for the coming of the Lord. As we remember his first coming 2,000 years ago, and as we prepare ourselves for the second coming, and as we live our lives today, where he is coming into our hearts, being born into our hearts, when we accept him, and he's being born into the hearts of others when we love the way he loves, a love that saves, when we give ourselves to others. Let us keep on living the way he calls us to live. Because many people are drowning. We are drowning. And let us ask the Lord to continue saving us. Let us think of the many people who are drowning too. He is waiting for people who can save them. He is waiting for us. And the Lord is calling us to go on. Go to these people. And share with them the love that saves us. Amen. Maybe we can have a time of Short prayer, Priya Gilbert. And I have prepared here some guide questions, if it's okay. I invite you, if you have the Bible there or in your cell phone, to read again the scriptures I have given. The first coming, taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. The second coming, from the Gospel of Matthew, 25, 31 to 46. And then ask yourselves, First, what part of the passage of formation struck me the most and why? Try to recall what we have received and try to deepen on the word of God. Second, how is the Lord inviting me personally to live this Advent season? What are the concrete things I can do as I joyfully wait for the coming of the Lord? We have one month until Christmas time. This is a beautiful day of waiting. Waiting not like doing nothing, <laughs> but actively and joyfully waiting for the one we have been longing for. Amen.